Hey everybody, I'm the Pigglesworth, and this is Outer Wilds. We're just going to look around on this planet here for a minute. You notice anything different? Yeah, I figured out how to make the controller work finally. <laughs> now I'm noticing something. When you jump, it's almost like gravity is slightly different on this planet, I'm thinking. But we did, we did get to explore outer space a little bit. So let's explore this planet. Let's see what there is here. So we got launch towers. What is this? Can we go in here? No. Can we go in the water? That's a good question. Hey, we can. Big giant waterfall? We take a bath. Is there anything behind the waterfall? I don't think so. Do I have a flashlight? I don't think I have a flashlight. We could have explored to see if there was anything back there, but I didn't see anything. Okay, this is that launch pad thing that we test. Ooh. That's crazy. That we test from up there. Ooh, gosh. <laughs> Did not expect that. Postcards from orbit. Let's go look through here for a minute. What do we got in here? Is this just interesting junk laying around? Or is this some kind of exhibit? It looks like different... Oh, that's not good. Oh, it's just stuff on a board. I thought it was a person stuck through there. And then what are you? I don't know. Okay, let's... Let's look at this and see what this says. This pilot seat used by pioneering Astra astronaut Feldspar is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless be remembered as a landmark achieve achievement in Harthian history. Okay, so the creatures here are Harthian. Am I Harthian? That I don't know. We're dead. There you are. Oh, it's daytime now. We can see Rutile. You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? Hey, we've already talked about this. They really don't explode as often as anymore. All I know is between the space program and Micah's model rockets, things seem to burn to the ground right here more than they used to. <laughs> Were you over here a minute ago? So it's launch day, huh? Hal's going to miss you. Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the platform those ships launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you built a new, less flammable one? The big tree in the village would be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program. Just say the word. Then, the, the current launch pad is fine, thanks. Nice try. We all know you have it out for that tree. The launch pad is flammable? <laughs> you didn't realize that? Don't worry. It's held up for all the, for all the launches so far. It'll definitely be fine for yours, probably. That's reassuring. Is there anything back here? No, it doesn't look like it. Where's that sun? Right above, right above us. Have I talked to you? Hello there, space cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. Is that what we're in? If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the traveler's instruments. Where's the observatory? Just saying hi before I leave. Oh, sure, I made all of their instruments, you know. Let me see. There's Chert's drums, Rybeck's banjo, and Gabro's flute. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course, though Feldspar's been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space, that'll be one of the space program's other travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. So that's what that music's about. We can use our little signal scope and we can figure out which planets different different creatures are on and we could potentially go talk to them. Okay, I feel like we're going back. I don't know that we've talked to these two. Hello, astronaut. If it isn't my favorite troublemaker, what's with the radio? We wanted to play hide and seek, but Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey, can we use your signal scope? 
Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be it. Sure, let's play. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. Galena and me will hide these radios, and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. All right, now I don't know how to bring up the signal scope. There we go. It knew. <laughs> I do believe there's a radio this way. <gasps> I do believe Piggy's falling this way. Okay, let's go back over here. That first radio was pretty easy to find, I must say. And there's one over there, too. I wonder if you get different outcomes depending on which one wins. I'm not quite certain how we would get up there, though. Where's the other one? Okay. Let's make our way over here. And then right here. Oh, I, I see. I see somebody hiding. <laughs> Just got to figure out how we're going to get down there. Maybe like... Oh, there we go. Wait, where, where? Is the creature? Oh, there you are. I found you. Oh, you found me, but my hiding spot was super good. Don't forget, you have to find both of us, okay? Okay, so let's jump over here. We're falling there, piggy. Go back this way. Use the triangle. Oh, cool. We can jump on top of that building. Ah, ha, ha. You thought you could hide. <laughs> I'm one. I'm happy. Thanks for playing with us. Oh, you're welcome. I guess that was it. Okay. So let's see here. That's the guy that wants to chop down the, the launch pad. <gasps> no, 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 Piggy. Jump up there. Or don't. Just fall off the building. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, you're playing banjo. Wasn't there like a museum or something that we could go explore? Maybe it was up here by the observatory. Zero G Cave and Observatory. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme. Sing, singing helps me pass the time. You're leaving the crater. Guess we'll be a little busier without you around to lend a hand. That big water plant, giant, Giant's Deep, that's where I go. Why is that? Or I need to find Hornfells. One time after the rest of the village had left to sleep, and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Gabbro told me about their first trip to Giant Steep. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't see far down on account of how murky the water was, I guess. Too dark. Gabbro wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down, but suddenly Gabbro couldn't go any further. Giant Steep has a current you can't pass through. I underestimated how boring this would be, or tell me more. I will. I was just pausing dramatically. <laughs> As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabbro go any deeper. It held Gabbro back, almost as if it was trying to protect them from something. And then in the terrible darkness, Gabbro saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast. I mean, that's what Gabbro said anyway. Whatever it was, it freaked Gabbro out pretty good. Everyone wants to hear new stories at the village campfire, you know. Make sure you bring some back with you. I would love to, but apparently if something bad happens to me, I start all over again. Groundhog Day uh, scenario, don't you know? So there's a zero-G cave up here. And in the observatory, we saw that weird alien creature thing that I guess has given us the power to loop in time. What are these things? Did we ever really explore this? Danger inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter. A strange and dangerous substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is that you can detect ghost matter with a camera. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around, Hornfels. I don't know that I have a camera. Is this a... Oh, here's a camera. R1 take snapshot. R1 take... Oh, there we go. I think the spaceship has a camera too, so that might be important later. Is to know how to look for this stuff. 
and that's a waterfall that just goes down, down, down. Okay. If I'm not... Ooh, there's a note here. What does this say? Hi. Hey, come say hi to your old flight coach before you launch. I've got zero G training set up if you want a refresher. Go on. What do you have to say? Did we talk to you? Hi, astronaut. You know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Gosan said it used to be bigger when they were a hatchling because ghost matter evaporates. It just takes a s super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm a grown-up. Ghost matter is awesome. Ghost matter is super cool. It'll burn the heck out of you. You shouldn't be throwing rocks in there. Ghost matter is dangerous. You know, ghost matter is how Tektite lost her foot, right? Shouldn't be throwing rocks. Oh, obviously, that's what makes it so awesome. Jeez, I'm not dumb enough to touch it. You're such a grown-up. <laughs> kids will be kids, am I right? Although me as an adult, I'd probably throw a rock in there too. All right. So the observatory's over there. That's probably where that museum is. I think that was the launch pad. Uh, hmm. Oh, hello, astronaut. This is good weather for your launch, right? That's lucky. What are you up to? I'm using my signal scope to pick up sounds from distant planets. It's set to the Outer Wild Ventures frequency, so I can pick up the Traveler's music. Last night, I heard Rybeck's banjo coming from Brittle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I can hear different planets, too. It depends on what time or day or night it is, since different planets are in the sky at different times. Signal scopes are cool. They are. Oh, there's a spaceship. Well, what was this thing up here? It's been a day since I've played. Let's see here. I saw smoke coming from Young Bark Crater up north, and I figured I should go check it out. You can use a scout launcher. Just please don't break it while I'm gone. Tech, tech type or tech type. What is this? Use scout launcher. What? R1 launch scout. <laughs> oh, my gosh. R1 retrieve. R1 takes snapshot. Oh, look at that. So there's a bunch of stuff just on this planet we could go explore. Volcanoes and other stuff. Rotate camera. Take snapshot. R1 retrieves it. Okay. Let's see what these things say. Northwest, Geyser Mountains. North, Young Bark Crater. Is there something this way? East, Nomai Ruins. South, Quantum Grove Crater. Now, can I get up out of this crater, or do I have to use a spaceship to go flying around and go look? Wait a minute, look at my hands. Am I one of these creatures? <gasps> I can't tell. Zero-G cave. What is this? Hey, I thought I might see you before the big launch. N nerves getting the better of you? Right, like you weren't nervous for your first flight. I'm a little nervous. Are you kidding? I'm a natural at this. Hey, don't worry about it. Your nerves are between you and me and the vast endlessness of space. But really, you'll f do fine out there. I'd worry more about that ship if I were you. Hopefully that lunatic slate at least fixed the retro rockets. So listen, there's a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment, set up down in the zero-g cave and in need of repairs. If you're looking for a little last-minute zero-g practice, head down the lift and into the cave. Or don't, so long as you're confident you can make ship repairs in space. One repaired satellite coming up, or now I'm ready for the real deal. We've already tried the real deal. Let's see if the training would have helped. Cool, get to it and try not to concuss yourself right before the first launch. All right, so let's see here. Do we, yeah, we just activate the lift. It's crazy, but it's giving you the sense of like being in space. That's pretty cool. How deep does this thing go? Wow. Flashlight. Press R1 for flashlight. We're in a mine. A mine. <laughs> you no, 
know I had to say it. Gimli would have it no other way. All right, let's see here. What are we doing? Zero G cave, zero G cave. Is this stuff important? Suit up or return suit? Left one, R, R2, L2 is down and up thrust. Oh, look, the little icon on the left. That, that goes down and this goes up. Okay, let's look around for a second before we... Okay, let's fly up. Now, how high up... Okay, so I still do have a little bit of gravity in here. Let's see. There's a platform up there. Why am I not flying up anymore? <gasps> whoa, that was crazy. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's like I was trying to fly up and it wouldn't let me. Do you have anything to say? Hey, hey, nice of you to drop down. Actually, I flew up. I'm getting some zero-g time in. Give me the dirt. Guess where I'm going today. I'm getting zero-g time. So you're going in there, in the cave? Hmm. What? No, I'm fine. Great. Great and fine. You don't look fine. Yeah, I'm going to drift around here for a while. You don't look fine. Well, you know I hate that cave, so I don't know why you're making me talk about it. Fwah. Now I got hand sweats. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Yeah, it's it's just... It's like a... Whoa! Oh my gosh, there's something crazy down there. Or is that where I came from? I don't think so. I, I think I came from over here, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay. So let's see here. That says 0G cave. So let's jump. And at least slow our descent. Yeah, I don't think I was down here. I think I was on the other side. So let's see. That, ooh. That is a crazy drop. Let's look around for a second. Oh, did I bump? Did I bump something? Oh, when I'm flying and I move the stick, and so I must have, like, jumped. Okay, let's see here. So I am falling. Zero of three repaired. Oh, crazy. Okay, being inside here, now you're actually not, um, not experiencing gravity. Okay, so let's just be gentle about this so we don't get crashed. Press L to lock. There we go. X hold to match velocity. Oh, that is cool. It's like it automatically figures out what's going on so that it don't crash. Okay, hold X, uh, square to repair. Got it. Okay, let's back out. So really what this is about is just like, uh, it's like contact. Small moves, Ellie. Small moves. Hold X to match velocity. I do like how that automatically does that for you. Okay, there we go. We had to get close enough. Okay, that's two repairs. Where's the third thing? Okay, we'll go over here. Nope, nope. Slow down, Piggy. Slow down. Okay. We have to lock on and then match velocity. And if we're flying all crazy and whatnot, that will help. Okay, let's get a little closer. There we go. No, no, no. I'm holding X. <laughs> oh, we have oxygen and fuel. I didn't realize that. Training simulation complete. Now I just got to figure out how to get out of here. Oh, there we go. Okay, fly. No, 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 no. Match velocity. <laughs> oh, there we go, banging into stuff. Okay, there we go. Now we're flying up, up and at them, or out them, up and out them. Is there something up there? I don't know. All right, let's see. Can we make our way back? It's crazy as I move around. It almost feels like everything has curvature to it, like it would be the curvature of the planet. <gasps> okay. That wasn't too bad. 50% fuel remaining. But we made it out with three repairs. 
Where do we put the suit? Did we put the suit on before we came down here? I don't think so. Let's go back and look. Where do we... Here's where we put the suit. That's what it was. I didn't think we wanted to take the suit with us. Okay, cool. So now we have a rudimentary understanding of how to operate when you're with your suit in space. Holding X locks onto thing, or holding X means that your your movement matches the object, and square does repairs. Hey, we survived. Nicely done. Of course, it'll be a little more stressful when you're hurtling through space, but just remember your training and try not to hit anything that big. I can see you're itching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there. And Hey, try to avoid hitting, getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into your training. Got it? You got it. So I wonder how many other creatures are stuck in like an infinite time loop. Like whenever they die, that they get brought back to a certain point and they have to relive everything. Or is it unique to just me? That I don't know. Let's, see, let's just stand here for a second. So yeah, that is a, like a deep crater. And I guess we're up near the edge of the crater. Let's not be too cold, though, because we do have water. The water's not uh, freezing or anything. Launch tower. That gets me every time, just seeing the planets move around. So crazy. Oh, we got people here. Did we read any of this stuff? Hornfells, Gauzen, Felspar, Esker, and Slate. Big... What was that? No, read, read, quick, quick, quick. What's the weird noise going on? Ooh, it got dark. What is that? Oh no, is something blowing up? <laughs> what just happened? And then the crazy thing again. Is there something like blowing up and destroying the world? But we only have a limited amount of time? I'm looking at how long I've been recording and it was about 24 minutes. That's crazy. Yeah, so it, it's kind of like um, Zelda Majora's Mask, maybe. Well, there's like a, a looped amount of time. So whatever we do, we have to be able to do it in 20 minutes or, uh, or the world restarts. I think that's what's going on. So are we supposed to be like... Um, what do you call it? Are we supposed to be saving the world? <laughs> saving this here planet? I don't know. Ooh, did I talk to you? Hey, oh hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gasan open up a bottle of the good stuff. Oh yeah, we did talk. Good luck in your travels. Okay, so let's go back up. How did we get up there? Was it... No, it wasn't through there. Oh, it's up this. That's what it was. Do a little hop and a skip and a jump. I do want to see what was up in that museum. Though. Oh, no, we've been here. That's not where we wanted to go. How do we get back to the observatory? This way. It's this way, Piggy. But yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like we're going to learn things about stuff that's going on. No, it's not this way. How am I all of a sudden getting so lost? It's right here. Observatory this way, Piggy. I need to throw breadcrumbs down just so I can find the way I'm, where I'm going. You know what would be a good question to ask? If we had flown off of this planet and that blue thing happened, would that have gotten us? I don't know. But yeah, it looks like 20 minutes is the uh, 20 or 25 minutes, somewhere in there. 
is going to be the loop of time that we've got to work with. Okay, I'm looking at my shadow. My arms are out to my side, weird. Maybe I am one of these creatures. I don't know. I don't think it lets you, like, look outside of your body like a Minecraft thing would. Okay, these two people are still over here, so let's go... Let's look at this stuff. What does this say? Outer Wild Ventures. Timberhearth's first and only space program was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian to be intentionally launched into space. They completed the first orbit around Timberhearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Adel Rock. Outer Wild Ventures founding members clockwise from top left, Hornfells, Gosan, Slate, and Feldspar. Okay, what was this saying? Big thanks to these additional founding members of Outer Wild Ventures, without whom we would never have gotten off the ground. wonder if that's like actual people that helped make the game. So what does this say? This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwelled in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with the most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. I feel like I've read this. I think I did. Okay, what do you have to say for yourself? Hey, I was just about to come find you. Look, look, look. You've got to see this. The Nomai statues are open. They, uh, they used to be closed. Probably should have started with that. And now they're opened. We're not sure why they opened, since no one actually saw it happen. But this is huge news. Should someone tell Gabbro, or maybe Ryback? Oh, stars, this is so exciting. It's making my stomach hurt. Hey, there's Hornfells. Hey, look at this. The statue opened its eyes. Bet you, bet you'd wish you'd seen that happen, huh? <sighs> Me too. I'm not even a little closer to understanding what's going on with this statue. Is there something you needed? Where are the other travelers? Tell me about Feldspar. No thanks, I'm good. Well, let's see. Chert is on the Hourglass Twins, Ryback is on Brittle Hollow, and Gabbro is on Giant's Deep. And there's Feldspar, obviously, but of course, we don't know where they are, or if they're even still alive. Feldspar has been lost for a very long time, I'm afraid. Tell me more about Feldspar. Feldspar was one of the four founding members of Outer Wilds, along with our flight coach, Gosan, Slate the Engineer, and me, as ground control and later the museum curator. I didn't work with Feldspar as closely as Slate and Gosan did. I can't tell you Feldspar was absolutely fearless, though. Nothing scared them. Test pilot everything Slate ever built. It was a wonder Feldspar lived to see space. Frankly, but they did. Flew all sorts of dangerous stunts and explored everything they could. And then one day, they just didn't come back. We don't know what happened, or where Feldspar went, or even whether they're still alive. It's been a long time since they left. No thanks, I'm good. Take care. So here's what I'm thinking. I might need to start taking notes. Because nobody can seem to find Feldspar. And Feldspar might be the key to things. And we have learned from one of the creatures down there that if we use this device and we have a list of which instruments each character uses, see, we can figure out which planet they're on. And then if we want to go visit them for more information, we'll know which planet to aim at. Now, I'm not 100% certain how we're going to do that yet because flying around seems a little bit finicky. And here's the other thing. I think last episode, when we first walked in here, these two creatures weren't here. And this thing activated when we walked through here. So I want to spend some time at researching, reading, and understanding what's in here. But the episode's getting long. So I think what we're going to do is call it an end of episode, and we'll come back next episode and explore this. So if you enjoyed this episode, please click that like button. And if you want to see more of these as I release them, you're not already subscribed and you want to be, well, go ahead and subscribe. And that way, maybe we can figure out what's going on with these here outer planets. What what, what in the world is that thing? <laughs> and why are we stuck in an infinite time loop? Maybe it's infinite, maybe it's not, who knows. But I'm just going to wait here for a moment to get ready to start next episode, and that's what I hope to see you, is in the next episode of Outer Wilds.